in a live stream. Perfect. Okay. Last thing and please and then I got it. All right, good. And I just checked it is in there. Okay, perfect. And let me make sure. All right. So now everyone who is not, since we're at maximum capacity, uh, we can't let anybody else in. I'm going to go ahead and lock it so that no one gets kicked out. Uh, yeah, well, let me do that. Okay. All right, everyone. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for um, being on camera. Welcome to week one of boot camp. I'm super, super excited. And today we are going to talk about the importance of making a list. How many of you have a running list that you have started as a result of your onboarding, a list of prospects and people you were gonna reach out to. If you have a, a running list, go ahead and type in the chat, I have my list. Let's see who has a list. Okay, good, good. Excellent, 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 excellent. The list is the main thing to get your business going um, when you start this business, you are always going to come in contact with um, people that you meet when you're out and about, maybe you're at a party, maybe you're at a networking event. Um, how many of you have ever gone to a pop-up tent vendor area and you collected business cards, right? These are all people. Your list has to be a running list. When you first get started in this business and you make a list with your coach, you might have, you know, 10, 20, 30 people. But guess what? In a few months, that should be 50 people, 100 people, 150 people. Eventually, that's going to be a list of 1,000 people. So you want to constantly add people to your list. The money is in the list. There will be people that you shared the business with this year who won't join into next year. But if you don't have the list, how do you know to even go back to follow up with them? To say, hey, happy new year. Just wanted to reach out to see, you know, um, if this year you were looking to start a business or looking at ways to earn some additional income, what are your goals for this year? You got to have the list. Um, Director Brown, what do you want to uh, share about the list and how important it is? Yes, super, super important because we are speaking to, we should be speaking to so many people on a daily basis, right? So we're peaking interest on Facebook. You might be speaking to somebody at a grocery store. And if you're speaking to a whole bunch of people, how are you going to keep track of all of them, right? So if you have a list that you've already started to build, now as you speak to people, you get to add them to your list. I can't even remember what I went upstairs for. So I'm not going to remember every single person I speak to unless I add them to my list. And then it's going to make it so much easier for you to stay on track. Remember yesterday, Director Burke talked about with the boot camp fog, you post a peak interest post and now you forgot to go back to all of these people. If you have a list and you're adding them to your list, all you have to do now is go back to your list, review that list so that you can follow up with everybody that you need to speak to. And there is a file inside of the group that I uploaded in there to help you with keeping track. And this is just to kind of give you a guide. You may end up making some adjustments and adding some different things, but I uploaded a file, the prospect follow-up tracker to kind of help guide you to keeping track. So you'll have your prospect's name, You'll have, you know, where you met them, whether it was on Facebook Messenger, maybe it was in a store. You have the date that you first interacted with them. You'll have how you expose them. Remember, we're talking about the um, PS3. So that first one is your peak in their interest and showing them the plan. So on that list, you can keep track of exactly how you expose them. So we have that first exposure to, and then of course, we're having our three-way call. So you also want to jot down who did your three-way call, the outcome 
of that call. So maybe they told you during the call, they let your expert know, let me speak to my spouse and I'll get back to you. So your expert is going to say, okay, so what's a good time? They're going to get that follow-up date for you. So you don't have to worry about doing that. You're going to put your follow-up date on the track on the tracker and then the outcome of when you followed up and then any notes. So this is just to help guide you. You can add different things, you can adjust, but you have to have a list in order to keep track. And it feels so good when you can write signed up, started next to those people name on your list. Back to you, Director Burke. I love it. I love it. The other thing that I would put on this list, um, when you have a start date, a start, I would actually put the date as well as the date that they started so that you can kind of look at your history and be able to see, oh, I enrolled, you know, three people this month, or I enrolled five people this month, or I didn't enroll anybody this month. So you kind of be able to track your activity as well. So again, this is going to be in the file section. So when you go into the group, just go to files and in files right now, we have three things. So you're looking at the prospect follow-up tracker. Now, some people do write their list in a book. Some of you might have a book and a book is fine. That is fine. However, I would encourage you to get comfortable with using an electronic version to track your list so that you can sort your list, right? You might wanna say, you know what? It's December, 2022. I wanna... Um, speak to go back and reach out to everybody that I spoke to December 2021. And so if you have it with an Excel document, now you can kind of sort and pull up just the people that you want for 2021. Um, and then the other problem with the book, what if you lose your book? What if you have 3000 people a few years from now on your list and you lose your book, you will be devastated. <laughs> I would be devastated. Um, so I highly recommend getting comfortable with Excel, um, work on it. You can't break Excel, okay? Some of you might be a little afraid of spreadsheets, but it's nothing to be afraid of. And Director Brown did a great job of putting that together. And just like she mentioned as well, it's everybody. If you have a shoe box, Full of business cards. Look, I think in my drawer here, business cards that I've collected from people. Take the business cards and now add those people to the list. If you did a post last week about the business, a business post to attract people to your business, everyone who liked and commented on that post should be added to your list. You're not going to you're not going to peek them right away. But think about this. If you did a business post, let's say I'm going to take Tina, for example, Tina Williams. Tina, imagine you do a post talking about your business is expanding and you're looking for other people who desire to earn some additional streams of income booking travel. And that you're just so thankful and grateful that you started your business years ago as a way to bring in extra income. And you get 20 people that like it. Let's say only one person comments, but 20 people like it. Would you agree that it's safe to say that if those people weren't like-minded like you, they probably wouldn't have liked the post? Would you agree with that? I agree. Right? So all of those people who like that post about starting a travel business, Tina wants to add those to her list. She's not going to pick them right away, but she they they raised their hand and said, hey, I'm like-minded. So that's the other missing piece um, that I have um, picked up on, on other boot camps is, again, you're doing all these great posts and you're getting all these likes and comments, but what are you doing with those likes and comments? Those, each one of, each person who liked that post each person who commented on that post, if they are currently not in the business, your goal is to now take them from the P to the S to the three. So just think about some of you who have, who have been in the business for years. And if you post every day, think how many people you could be taking through the PS3. Director Brown, you have anything to add to that? 
I want to add what I'm going to do is post in the group different um, ideas on how you can start conversations. Because some people will say, well, they like my posts. What, what do I say to them? And sometimes it's super, super basic. So even if they like the posts of my daughter, my daughter just had her birthday. I had a lot of people that liked and commented on that post. And they're all people that I can start a conversation with. And once I start that conversation, when we're having conversations with people, it's always going to turn into what do you do like for work? And if it doesn't, if someone asks me, you know, how are you doing? What are you doing this weekend? Oh, I'm going to be super, super busy. You know, I have meetings lined up this weekend. I have to put some trips together. Oh, what is it that you do? Now mm -hmm. I get to tell you what it is that I do. But something as simple as you guys, you can say things like, hey, I saw that you commented on my post. Hey, I saw that you liked my post. How have you been? It's been a while. Now I'm striking up a conversation with you. Hey, I saw that you looked at my story today. How are you and your family doing? Every like, every comment, every view is a way for you to start up a conversation. And eventually in that conversation, this important, in that conversation, you need to say something to pique their interest. Don't just have the conversation to have it. You're going to switch it to pique their interest. So I'm going to post some different things um, that you can say to start up conversations. Back to you, Director Burke. I love that. I love that. Any of my other directors want to chime in on this conversation? How important is the list? Absolutely. Hey, everybody is Director White. Oh, I'm sorry, Tyra. Go ahead. No, no that's okay. Um, hey, everybody. So, yes, the list is very important. I remember when I very first got started, guys, um, that list actually helps you with your follow up because Y'all, I was horrible at my follow-up game. And what started happening to me is that people that I had peak interest had showed the information to later on in life, somebody else came along and guess what? Peak their interest and they wind up signing up, guys. So not only just peaking the interest, showing the plan, the three-way call, but y'all, that follow-up game, y'all, it's a must. So I would definitely add that in too. Back to you, Director. Awesome. Who was that? Director White, were you going to say something? Yes, I was just going to say this is Candace White. I was just going to say, I'm sorry, we are driving and it's dark here. Um, I was just going to say that it is definitely fortunate to follow up in making the list. I recently went through my list and um, I called about 30 people, got to the 30th person. And the lady told me she was so happy that I called her because the last time we spoke, she said that her husband had just lost her, his job. They were going through life changes. And now he had a new government job. She had a new other business and she was ready. She signed up that same day. And so it's definitely fortunate in a follow-up and just being genuine though with the follow-up. And one thing I will add, I always put notes next to the prospect's name. For example, if they tell me, oh, I have like my kids graduating and I have to wait or something like that, I'm always taking notes. So then when I'm calling them to do the follow-up, I can say, how is so-and-so, right? How, how was your husband, right? Last time we talked this, this, and this. So that those are some uh, things that I just wanted to add. Thank you. Thank you. That's good. Any of my other directors want to chime in? Director Burke, this is Mr. Grant. How's it going? Hello, Director Grant. Um, do understand that when you do that follow-up, you're not trying to get married on a first date. What I mean by that is don't try to, you know, get them to join the business that day. You're doing a follow-up to figure out if this opportunity is best for them. You're basically doing an interview because not every, just because this business is for you, it may not be for everyone else. But do understand that life happens over 30 days, 45 days, 90 days, over a six-month time frame. So everybody's economical um, or economy changes for their household. So use your post as a tool to, you know, strike conversations to see if someone is interested and by all means, when you do your follow-up, be genuine about it. You know, don't make it about you and your numbers because understand, you know what you get from this opportunity, but what are you helping that person that's about to become your brand new business partner? What are you helping them obtain from this opportunity? Back to you, Director Burke. I love that. I love that. I love that. Corey, you had a question? I see your yes, hand. I, I did. I had a question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um so i wanted to go back to um what director brown was saying 
when she said she was going to do some um, examples or some posts in the group as to like what to say. For example, today um, I was at the, the core tour in, here in Chicago and I had posted a picture um, next to the Planet Marketing signage. And I noticed that I had got like a bunch of likes on Facebook. And I like, okay, so I got these likes and so these might be potential prospects. Now what my, I always get confused or get jumbled as to now, what do I say? Because they didn't really comment, mm -hmm. but what do I say? Okay. Um, okay. Because I want to know, because it's like, how do I necessarily introduce or how do I necessarily broach the, the subject mm -hmm. with these people? So I just, I just wanted to just kind of say like that. Thank you to uh, Director Brown for, you know, saying that, because that, that's kind of where I kind of get stuck, right. stuck at. And then I also... Um, my call to action, like what is the right call to action when you're in those um, type events and, and circumstances? Like what is the exact wording that you want to use without sounding um, pushy or sounding too like sales, like a salesman and that, that kind of stuff. Okay. All right. And you're going to learn all of that in this boot camp. Just not tonight. <laughs> tonight, we're going to focus on the list. So one of the other things, and I'm going to share the screen again, when you, and, and just a heads up, if you are a co-host, please do not let anybody else in. We are at 100. And every time you try to let somebody in, it will kick somebody off. So if you see someone in the waiting room and you know that um, you have their, their number or something, just tell them to go into the boot camp group. We are streaming live in that group and we will always stream live in the group. All right. So what I wanted to do, where did I want to go? Okay. So here in files, we also have a memory jogger and we're going to go through the memory jogger tonight. So what I want everyone to do is to start on a fresh, clean sheet of paper or if you have a list, go ahead and pull out your list. And we're going to go through some of these questions in the memory jogger. And the memory jogger is something that you want to do with your new business partner and yourself so that you can start the list. Because a lot of times when people get started in this business and they're told to make a list, what they do is they start thinking about people that they think will be interested in the business. And that is not what you should do when you're working your list. The memory jogger is to help you think of everybody that you know that you may have forgotten. Because remember, you have two businesses. One business as a planet marketing rep where you can sell the business opportunity to other people. But then you have a second business as a travel agent. If people don't know that you're a travel agent, how are they going to know the book with you? They won't. And so with this list, not everybody is going to partner with you. We know that, but that is not the point of making the list. The point of making the list and using the memory jogger is to help you to think of every single person you could possibly think of so that you can take that person off the market. For example, on this list, we have your parents, right? Some of you have young parents. Some of you have old parents, right? You might be thinking, my mom is 77 years old. She is not going to do this business. Well, guess what? Your mom still needs to know that you even have a business. Your mom needs to know that you can book her flight, that you can get her a hotel, that you can book a rental car for her. And not only that, your mom may know people that you don't know that are looking for travel agents. But if you never even share with your mom that you are a travel agent because you're so busy thinking, oh, she's not gonna do this business, how can she be that bridge to other people, all right? So I'm gonna go through just some of these um, questions in the memory jogger and all I want you to do is whatever name pops to your mind, 
just write it down. I don't want you to think about whether they'll do the business, not do the business, book with you, not book with you. That's not the point. The point is just whatever name pops in your mind, I want you to start writing. And I want everyone that um, at the end of this exercise, I'm gonna ask, I want you all to type in the chat how many new people, new people as a result of this exercise did you add to your list? All right, y'all ready? Number one, who is dissatisfied with their job? Who is dissatisfied with their job? You might have five people that just pop into your mind. Write their names down. Who is unhappy with their income? Who is unhappy with their income? Who is concerned about the environment? Who is concerned about the environment? Who is money motivated? Who is money motivated? Who owns their own business? Maybe they sell jewelry, maybe they do lashes. So maybe they have a landscaping business. Maybe they're a makeup artist, a hairstylist. Who owns their own business? Maybe it's a boutique in your neighborhood, your salon, your barber. Who owns their own business? Who quit their job or is out of work? Who quit their job or is out of work? Who enjoys being around high energy people? Who enjoys being around high energy people? Who needs extra money? Think about that last person who asked you to cash out them 20 bucks. <laughs> who needs extra money? Next one, your friends. your friends, your brothers and sisters, your brothers and sisters, your parents, your parents, your cousins, Even your play cousins. <laughs> your godmother, your godfather, add them too. Your aunts and uncles. Your grown children over 18. Your spouse's relatives. Who went to school with you? Who went to school with you? Who works with you? 
that might be the same person that you know is unhappy with their job. Think about these baby boomers. Who is retired? Or who is that person you know who keeps talking about retiring? their retirement date. Who do you know that works part-time? Who do you like the most? Don't put me down, I'm already in the business. Who was laid off? Who purchased a new home? Who answers classified ads? Do they still have those? I guess they do. Who runs personal ads? Who gave you a business card? Who works at night? Who delivers pizza to your home? Who sells Avon or Mary Kay? Who sells Tupperware? Who sells paparazzi? Who sells Bitcoin? Who wants freedom? Who likes team sports? <laughs> Director Brown, you want to take over for a moment? Yes, ma'am. Let me pull it back up on here so I can see it better. All right. Who is a fundraiser you know there's always those people you know whether they have cheer teams or anything like that there's a lot of people that's always doing different uh fundraisers who watches tv often always telling you about the new netflix uh series to watch and what's new on tv who works on cars who likes political campaigns who are social networkers? These people already talk to people. They love talking to people. That's what they do. Who is in the military? Who do your friends know? You know, we might not be friends with these people, but your friends are connected with some people that could be interested. Who is your dentist? Who is your doctor? Who will help you? If you needed somebody right now to lend a helping hand with anything, who is that person that you know you can call on that will help you? Who works for the government? Who is unemployed? Who attends self-improvement seminars? Who waits on you at restaurants? Who cuts your hair? Who does your nails? Who does your taxes? And they know all about the tax write-offs and the benefits of being a home-based travel agent, having a home-based business, period. Who works at your bank? Who is on your holiday card list? Who is in retail sales? They're a salesperson. 
who sells real estate? You know, we have a lot of people that are in real estate and um, they understand how commissions work. Who is a teacher? Who services your car? Some of you have probably been going to the same person forever. Have you brought up your business? Do you talk about it when you're having a conversation? Who repairs your house? Who manages your apartment? This list is getting so long. <laughs> Who has children in college? Who likes to dance? Those blues, they like going out and partying. Who likes to dance? Who sold you your car? Who did you meet at the last party you went to? Who likes to buy things? That one person that's the shopaholic, can't stop shopping. Who have you met on a plane? Who does volunteer work? They love helping people. You want again? We haven't seen the last pass. Let me mute out. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Who has two jobs? Who has been in network marketing? Who needs a new car? Who wants to go on vacation? That's always the, the easiest one to get somebody. They looking to go on a vacation. I can show you how you can go on a vacation and book that trip yourself and make money. Who works too hard? Who was injured at work? Who lives in your neighborhood? Who is your boss? Who delivers your mail? Who calls you at home if you have a house phone? Anybody still got a house phone? <laughs> no. Who calls you on your house phone? Who calls you at work? Who delivers the paper? Anybody get a newspaper delivered to them? Who handles your gardening? Who watches your children? Who attends your church? Who did you meet on the street? Maybe you were taking a walk. Who did you meet through your friends? Who tailors your clothes? Who sells cosmetics? Who bags your groceries? Who is dying for a promotion at work? Who exercises often? Who is a vegetarian that you know? Who plays sports that you know? And who is wealthy? That is a long list, Director Burke. Oh, good. I know. So that was, that was nine before. All right. So I want everybody to count how many new people did you add to the list and put it in the chat. Josephine got 57. Luce got 53. Wow. Bell, 31. D. Smith, 67. Awesome. Felicia, 48. 44, 33, 25, 56, 
Excellent. 42. 41. Good job, Jenna. Ebony got 33. Donna Bell, 37. Louise, 39. Kim Sykes, 67. Wow. She writes fast. She was writing shorthand, y'all. Debbie Jones, 21. Marley, 22. Good, good. Kim Herring, 43. Teriana, 45. LaRonda got 78. She was typing. <laughs> Excellent. Laura Spillman, 47. Shia Payne, 79. Wow. Lana, 27. Leroy, 73. Jada, 54. This is excellent. 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 Marsha got 71. Okay. Good job, everyone. Don't you wish you would have did this when you first got started when your coach told you to do it? <laughs> All right. Now, here's the next step. When you start this business, one of the things that you need to do is to launch your business. And Director Brown and I are going to go live in the group tomorrow. And we're going to talk about launching. But here's the thing. When you start this business, you have a matrix. And in your matrix, you have $3 million seats. And you want the first three people to partner with you to be people that are gonna stick and stay and wanna build the business with you. So I want you to think about, you just started a million dollar corporation and you have to assign the positions of president, vice president, and CEO. These are gonna be the people that you trust. These are gonna be the people who stand in the gap when you can't. These are gonna be the people who lock arms with you or saying, oh, I see money on the table. Let's go get it. These are not people who just want to book travel. These are going to be your, your builders, the people. So I want you to think sharp, ambitious, driven, professional. Now, I'm going to share with you what I do. This is just me personally, because guess what? This is what my coach did with me. Okay, so this is the world according to Tanisha, and it doesn't mean anybody, anything to anybody but Tanisha. But when I enroll a new business partner and I am onboarding them, I have them identify their top 10 to 20 people. So this ain't everybody. This is your top minimum 10, but depending on their network, they might have 20 that make the list. Sharp, ambitious, driven professionals. So what we want you to do tonight is to identify your top 10, or again, you may have 20, but this is not that whole list of 27 or 78, no. We're looking for the top 10 or 20 that you would trust to be the president, the vice president, and the CEO of your business. So look at your list. I'm sure you're gonna think of some other people to add to the list. Um, and then just identify who those top 10 to 20 are. And then tomorrow when Director Brown and I go live in the group, we will let you know what you're gonna do with the top 10. And so with that, we got four minutes left. I wanna hear from a couple of people. Um, what are your thoughts about this exercise that you did tonight with creating a list? Maybe this was your very, very first time. You've been in the business for a while and you never created a list. Um, or maybe you had a list and you just realized you left a whole bunch of people off the list. But I want to hear some feedback on the exercise that we did tonight um, for boot camp. Anybody? Yes. Um, thank you so much for that suggestion. <clears throat> uh, this is my first time being in boot camp. Um, but it also helped me to rethink of uh, that it's okay to make a list of people, even though you may not get the accomplishment of getting everyone on the list, um, but still see that you're you're pushing yourself towards something and doing something better than not at all. Mm -hmm. um, but then also kind of help you say it's okay 
that even if you wrote things down and you got everybody you wrote it's kind of like a to me like it just kind of helped me continue to do what I already was doing which yeah. was kind of being like the secretary which is the organizer you always carrying stuff on you always writing stuff down yeah. <laughs> but it's okay to carry it with you this time so that you don't have to try to be uh, always the memory book, always yeah. trying to remember on top of your head who this person was, and you're you're going everywhere so much that it's gonna be it is gonna be kind of difficult to try to memorize everything at what time, what place, what location, where was it at exactly? Three o'clock, four o'clock at the store, right. on a trip okay. or something. So right. thank you, thank you, Deanna, Mona. <laughs> um, so <laughs> this list made me realize that I do not talk to enough people. Mm. I don't talk to enough people. That's good. That's really, really good. And I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, when you're a business owner, you, you got to change. You may think you're an introvert, but guess what? You better learn how to be an extrovert so you can get your money. Right. A lot of times we go into a, a let's say you need to get some, some milk. And you're thinking, you know what? I'm just going to run into Publix real quick. No, you can't just run in and run out. You better start talking to the people that are waiting in line behind you, in front of you. Find a reason to compliment them, something. Because you want to market your business. I'm glad you brought that up. Uh, Destiny. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good, how are you? Good. So this is my first boot camp. I've been in the business like almost three weeks now. So I'm still very new. Awesome. <laughs> Congratulations and welcome to the family. Thank you. So my question is, I know you kind of explained it, but what, what makes those three seats more important than say like someone who inboxed me today and was like, Hey, you know, tell me a little bit more about it or someone that I may be invited to like a business opportunity that was on earlier. Like what is so special about those three seats? Okay. Great question. So let me pull up a visual. This is what your matrix looks like. So imagine this is you at the top. The first three people to partner with you go in these three seats. Now, every row multiplies by three. So if you look at this person here, here's their three seats. Look at this person. They have three seats. This person, they have three seats. But guess what? If we were able to look below this, this person here, they have three. They have three, right? So those are the million dollar seats. Now, when you enroll someone in the business, that person, the computer just looks for the next available open position in your matrix. And they're going to put that new person in that open position, that open seat. So the first person I enrolled was this person. So they took my number one million dollar seat. The second person that enrolled took my second million dollar seat. And the third person took my third million dollar seat. So guess where person number four is gonna fall? Boom, under this person. Guess where person number five is gonna fall, right? So everybody who joins the business after your first three people, they're going to fall into the matrix of one of these three people. And now these three people, if they're builders, once they hit gold builder, they now have access. Well, let me say this. Once they open their matrix, they now have access and are in position to make $4 per person per month that's in their matrix. So real quick, the first person I enrolled was my dad, retired, 77. Retired people like to travel, all their friends like to travel. So starting a travel agency made sense to him as a way to supplement his income. A few weeks after he got started, he realized planet marketing was network marketing and wanted nothing to do with it and said, I just want the travel agency. I don't want to do anything with the marketing business. I don't want people making money off of me. I said, daddy, that's not how it works. He's like, I don't care. I don't want nothing to do with it. Keep in mind, planet marketing was barely a year old. None of us knew what the heck we were doing. A few weeks later, I looked in my matrix, my, my dad's account, and I see he had 71 people in his matrix. And I said, who the heck are these 71 people? My dad hasn't logged in. He hasn't enrolled anybody. Who are the 71 people that fell in his matrix? And when I pulled this matrix tree up, 
I saw, oh, I enrolled this person. I enrolled this person. I enrolled this person. People that I had enrolled in the business had spilled over into my dad's matrix because he was in my number one spot. And so I reach out to him and I say, hey, dad, I, I know you don't want to do anything with the marketing business, but I'm going to take that leg of business and build it. He said, oh, I don't care. Do what you want to do. So what did I do? I created an LLC and made me the managing member. And the next nine people who wanted to join the business, I signed them up under my dad to unlock all nine levels of his matrix. And as of today, this one account brings in over $1,000 a month into my household. Why? Because some of these 71 people kept telling people who tell people who tell people. And now there's almost 300 people in this matrix. If my dad had only wanted to book travel and not open that up, guess what? Those people would still fall into that matrix and Mr. Bradley would be able to keep that $1,000. He wouldn't have to pay it out to anybody because you got to be a planet marketing rep in order to access that residual income. This person partnered with me, canceled. But guess what? I kept enrolling people who fell into her matrix. And if she would have stuck in stage, she would have been getting almost $400 a month in residual income just based off of my efforts alone because she's in my number $2 million seat. And that number is just going to continue to grow. This happened to be my best friend. Thank God my best friend got my million dollar seat. And who did she enroll? Director Really, four-star director. Guess who fell into my dad's matrix? Director Shaheen Grant. Who's run into two-star? So at some point, that $1,000 a month is going to turn to $2,000. That's why you want to pay attention to who your first three people are. Now, you can't control these people. And I know we're going over, but... Um, you can't control what those people are going to do. If I knew Stephanie, my number two person was going to quit. And if I understood what I'm sharing with you tonight, I would have never let her take my number two seat. And, and then when she got in, all she wanted to do was book travel. If I would have known what I know now, I would have never let her get my number two million dollar seat ever. So that's why I'm saying identify your top 10 to 20 sharp, ambitious, driven professionals. These are not the people who just want to book travel. Matter of fact, they may not even know about the business yet. So don't even think about that. Just think who's sharp, ambitious, driven, professional. I hope that answered your question. Leroy. Well, you kind of asked my question too. And one, one thing I thought about, um, like the other guy was saying earlier, we don't just want somebody just to warm a seat. You want somebody that's going to do something to get into the business. So I know we named, as you as you did, as you called all the things for the list, and we started naming people on the list, a lot of people's names started coming to my mind, but then when you start really start looking at them and seeing what kind of work as they have, but some of them you work with, some of them you know personally, the things that they do and how they conduct their business, you wouldn't want them in one of those seats. And I wouldn't want them to share it all with me, so. But <laughs> it is, exactly. it's, a good, it's a good exercise to get a chance to look and see who you're really picking, not just somebody who's coming along for the ride and not gonna do anything. Absolutely, absolutely. Jada? Hi, yes. Um, sorry. Forgive my daughter. She's okay. making a little noise. She likes to sing when she eats. That means it's good. Okay. <laughs> I do the same um, thing. <laughs> um, sorry, but yes. Um, so I just joined this week, so I haven't even been in a full seven days. Oh, um, welcome and congratulations. Welcome to the family. You, thank you. Thank you. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is my first boot camp, first everything, first I'm doing this list. So that's why I had a lot of people, but I did realize that a lot of the names I had like in the beginning for the first few questions, they kind of repeated towards the end like I was like oh this person kind of falls under this this and this category mm -hmm. um and also I realized most of it is like family like really close family and friends mm -hmm. so once you were talking about uh like who bags your groceries I started wondering well how would I approach that person or or and on what level because you know I may only have 
a couple minutes to talk to someone who's bagging my groceries Mm -hmm. so what like how how do you start that conversation is that something that we'll be talking about yeah we'll be talking about that during boot camp but just to let me just say this don't always look to prospect somebody when you first meet them. Just focus on making a new friend, right? You may not, again, like I said, you gotta, you need a gallon of milk. You're like, oh, I'm just gonna run into Publix real quick and grab my milk. Stop and talk to people. Now you have a reason to say something to the person that's bagging your groceries, right? Is, you know, how you doing? I hope you, how's your new year? Something, make a new friend. Get to know them, remember their name. Cause guess what? You're gonna go back to that grocery store at some point, right, Jada? There's a lady at Publix, she likes my purse. I have a, a purse that looks like the American flag. She loves it. And so she remembers me. And so now every time I go in there, I know who she is. And guess what? Last week I had a peak interest business card and I, I handed it to her. I said, listen, if you're ever looking to make some additional income, I help position people on the money-making side of the travel industry. And we'll go over that at at another time, but just to kind of give you an example, talk to people, make new friends. Don't think about, oh, I need to prospect them right now. I just want you to focus on expanding your network. You're a business owner now. And if you are a secret agent, you will be a broke agent. Director Brown, you have anything to add to this in closing? Thank you, thank y'all. You're welcome, Jada. I just love, 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 love like uh, Jada and there's a couple other people that just got started. They yeah. just got started. And I love that because when you first get started and you have that onboarding, it can be overwhelming. It can be a lot. And now with you being in this boot camp, even if you've been in the business for a while and you never really thought about all these people and made that list with this boot camp, taking everything one step at a time one step at a time. So going through that list, thinking about those people and just doing that right now. And then think about, okay, how can I you know, share the business with these people? And we're gonna give you those different things and how to start those conversations with these individuals and invite them to a launch that you're having or a presentation that you're having, but taking everything one step at a time. So it's another thing that makes me excited. I know we said this yesterday, but it Another thing that just makes me excited because I know how much this is going to really, 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 really help people. So even after we um, leave off tonight, you know, if you are somebody that's the night owl and you're going to be up for a little while longer, really, really sit down. The memory jogger is in the boot camp. So Director Burke just put it up on her screen, but the file is in the boot camp. Go back in there look at it, go through it again, see if it's anybody that you missed. Tomorrow, you may think of more people and really, really start to think about all the people that you actually know. The first thing people say when they get started, I don't know a lot of people. And then you make this list like, oh, wait a minute. I do know a good handful of people. So go back through that list and work with it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, what, for what's to come. I'm excited I have a too. Yes. <laughs> It's funny how I have <clears throat> one, I mean, just kind of like an example. I have a, a parent that I work with at work and she seems like she really wants to do it. Mm-hmm. But the, the main comment, I think one of the examples, I don't know, it might just be me, but like one of her, one of the main common examples I get is the last couple of parents that wants to work with me or be a business partner. It's like, they're saying, well, I'm so busy or, I haven't, I really want to be part of this presentation or I want to be, come to the Zoom meetings to learn more about this business, but I haven't had the time. So I've been getting more people saying they want to be part of it, but don't have the time to Mm -hmm. be part of the the presentations or, uh, or they may have watched the video, but then haven't got a chance to go to the presentation so they can get more further into detail. And then, um, but I think I did try another suggestion, like, hey, maybe we could sit down and have lunch or something, sit down and talk, and then you could talk to my supervisor or my business partners. I mean, I try to help as much as I can. Right. Well, we're going to get into that, Deanna. I can tell you now you're doing too much talking. But we will get into that. Again, I don't want to take this conversation to something that we're going to be discussing in week two, week three, week four. Let's stay where we are right now. I want you all, again, you're going to get everything you need 
to be successful in this business from this boot camp. But I don't want anybody to jump too far ahead and become overwhelmed. I want to show you just how simple it is. So if you have a, a business partner, a new business partner that got started, do this exercise with them to help them come up with their list. This is how you can lead the people you have already partnered with, all right? And then tomorrow at 6.30 p.m., doc, uh, doctor, I was calling you Dr. Brown, Director Crystal Brown and I are gonna go live in the boot camp group, and we're gonna talk about what you're gonna do with the top 10 or 20 people that you have identified, all right? So everyone have a great night and uh, we'll see you in the boot camp tomorrow at 6.30. So have a great night, everybody. Night, Thank everyone. you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.